السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله مبعوث رحمة للعالمين We begin the name of Allah the most merciful the grantor of mercy all praise and glory be to Allah Lord of the world certainly Allah is deserving of the best of thanks and the most beautiful praises and testify that no one is worthy of our worship but Allah and Allah alone without any partners the true supreme king and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was indeed his prophet and his servant and his messenger whom he sent as a mercy to the worlds. Okay, so <clears throat> we were actually redoing yesterday's video because uh, I didn't like the way I uh, may have confused you guys. So let's talk about the subject again. Who are those exempt from fasting and how do they compensate for that? How do they make up for that? We said that those liable to fast are every sane adult resident capable Muslim and we spoke in the first video two nights ago about the resident what that means if you're traveling the type of travel that you would be allowed to shorten your prayer in even if you're not exhausted you're still allowed to break your fast even if it's not burdensome on you you're still allowed to whether it's preferable to fast or preferable to break your fast is a debate among the scholars but the permissibility the exemption is there for those who choose to take it so that's the person that's traveling, we've already covered it. So the, the resident are, is the one that is not exempted in that regard. But then we said those that are capable. Who are those that are capable? Um, whoever is not incapable. <laughs> those that aren't incapable are a few. First of all, because they're a unique category, uh, those legally incapable of fasting, the woman that is menstruating or the woman that is postpartum, uh, those are legally incapable, meaning Allah has made it illegal, unlawful on them to fast and they must make up the days. Meaning Allah out of his mercy has obligated them to break their fast uh, and to make it up uh, at another time when they are not going through these periods. Uh, it is important to always say that sometimes our sisters, because they know their calendar, their cyclic calendar uh, <clears throat> well, or they're that regular, in their cycles, that as soon as they feel the onset, they say, oh, today is the day, and the, therefore I have uh, started my menses. The menses is not demarcated by the cramps beginning or the date arriving. It is by the appearance of blood. Once the blood appears at some point throughout the day, then automatically that day, uh, if it is not Maghrib yet, you would break your fast and make it up at another time while not worrying about your reward for having fasted that many hours that day, of course. Okay, moving on now, those that are incapable <clears throat> are basically those that are physically incapable, like the broad terminology for it is the sick, al marid But those are uh, of various types. So there are people that are sick, uh, and by sick, well, the one definition that would apply to all of them is that they would be adversely affected in a significant way if they fast, it would harm them physically uh, <clears throat> or harm the baby they're carrying or nursing or it could delay their their uh, recovery from their illness because they're not taking their medication or they're weakening their body uh, excessively or in a significant fashion. The person who is sick in a way that could be uh, further aggravated or further harmed by fasting, they're automatically allowed to break their fast, the sick person. And then the sick people, if they are able to <clears throat> make up the days uh, at another time because they finished their course of medication or they're better now, or it is something chronic, they'll have it their whole life, but maybe the days in the winter would be shorter so they can ma make up those days. If they're able to make up the days, they should make up the days. If they're not able to make up the days, then... Uh, they will have to pay or feed a fidya. Fidya is basically an atonement or uh, atonement is for a sin. No, it is like an expiation, uh, a, a ransom for your fast, if you will. That's the literal translation. But that's what a fidya is, an exchange for your fast. And we'll explain what that exchange is at the end of the lecture, inshallah. So you, those that are able to make up their fast can should make up their fast. So that applies to the person that is uh, going through a curable disease or a disease that would still allow them to make it up at a later time because they're, they're significantly better, or the day is shorter so they won't be adversely affected. If they can make it up, they make it up. That applies to the sick person from you know typical illnesses. 
that applies to the elderly person. Sometimes a person may reach an age where they become so weak that they cannot um, fast the longer days, but they can fast the shorter days, like the winter days. Uh, in that case, they would make it up that way. But if they can't make it up that way, they would just, um, if even the shorter days aren't short enough, they would just, once again, offer the fidya for each day. They would break their fast. Um, <clears throat> Anas ibn Malik, by the way, the companion of the Prophet wasallam, when he got old, he would not be able to fast or break it or make up his fast because everything was too long of a day for him. What he would do is on the last day of Ramadan, he would invite uh, 30 needy people and feed them a hot meal and that would make up for his 30 days. Anyway, so that is the sickness that is curable or it may be alleviated to a point where it would be easy for them to make up the fast. Those are the people that need to uh, uh, make up the fast. And then there's the, pe the, the women that are pregnant and nursing. If you're pregnant or you're nursing and you're going to be adversely affected by fasting, like you're going to dehydrate or the doctor, a reliable doctor, and preferably a Muslim doctor, because sometimes the, the non-Muslim can be culturally shocked by the fact that you fast and they may like um, exaggerate a little bit the, the severity of it. But if you know from prior experience or you have a reliable doctor, preferably a Muslim doctor, telling you you shouldn't be fasting, you're going to be too, too dehydrated or it could harm your fetus, or after you've given birth, you, it could harm your, your newborn, or you will not be producing enough milk, you know that from yourself, for your child. In all those cases, when you or your child will be adversely affected by the fasting, you're allowed to break your fast as well. You're just like the sick person who needs to make it up at a later time once your body is ready uh, to allow you to fast without uh, backlash on you or on your child. That's basically it. So those are uh, the ones that are exempt from fasting. Um, the menstrual and postpartum, the sick person from curable and incurable diseases. <clears throat> we'll talk about the fidya in a second. The elderly person who's considered perpetually ill or perpetually incapable physically. And then the woman that is pregnant or nursing and fears for uh, herself or her child. Okay, so the fidya. How is the fidya done? Which is the ransom for those that need to break their fast. If you uh, are a sick person or an elderly person that do not expect to get better or stronger to the point where you can make up the days, and for every day, you're going to offer a fidya. A fidya, just simply put, don't hold me to the, the legal measuring stick on this. Uh, one sar, which is basically 500 uh, grams uh, of staple foods like wheat and oat and barley and things like this, would be permissible um, uh, according to some scholars, but just take the safer opinion, the Hanafi opinion, one sar, which is basically a kilogram of staple food, uh, for uh, whatever kind. Some scholars differentiate between the kind of food, half a kilogram for this or a kilogram of that, one kilogram of food, or like Anas radiallahu an did, it's equivalent in a hot meal for simplicity. There are like good charity websites that have like in the, in the drop down tab, fidya for fasting multiplied by 29 days or from Ramadan was 30 days. And that's it. You can make your life easier and follow that uh, protocol. So that's if you're not able to make the fast up. There's one last thing to be said, which is the person who is a pregnant or nursing mother and she felt the need or was told you cannot do this to yourself by a reliable physician, you must break your fast. Uh, she's going to make up just like the sick person, as we said. This is according to all four madhahib. Two out of the four madhahib may in some situations uh, like if she fears for her, her child, but herself, uh, also pay the fidya on behalf of, in addition to making up the days. So she would pay the fidya if she fears for her child, not for herself. That's the position in the Hanbali Madhab. Um, and so that would be the safer position to take. Um, <clears throat> that's the uh, first thing I wanted to say about nursing and pregnant. The next thing, I can't speak about too many hypotheticals, but the next and last thing about nursing and pregnant that there is an opinion from Abdullah ibn Umar and Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them, that mentions that a woman does not have, who was uh, breaking her fast due to pregnancy or nursing can just consider herself like the elderly. Don't even expect to uh, make it up later or try to make it up later. Just pay the fidya uh, and that's it. Um, this is contrary to the opinion of the four major schools of Islamic law. 
But if it becomes an excessive hardship, these are legitimate companions, huge companions, multiple companions of the Prophet ﷺ who had this view. So perhaps this view can be adopted as many scholars do nowadays as a concession. In other words, if she's been piling on days because she could have a baby, so it's like three years, one year pregnancy and two years nursing. And then another uh, child comes. What happens after three, four, five kids? She could have 15 years of Ramadan to make up between the nursing and the pregnancy exemptions. How do you do that? Uh, so in that case, when it piles on to be too much for her, she can just consider herself uh, the sick person who is not able to make up fast due to the number of the fasts now, even if she's perfectly healthy after that. In that case, she would just pay the fidya for that number of days and that would be the end of it. There are questions coming up as expected. We will uh, inshallah address them. On Sunday, as we said, we'll dedicate a day a week to the fiqhi, the legal questions. Zakallah khayn, everybody. I hope that was clearer uh, than yesterday. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum.